Hi guys, this is your girl Wakiji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakiji Kamore. <laughs> here for the very first time karibu sana please stick to the end and remember to subscribe and to click the notification bell that way you will not miss any of our video that goes up of course if you're a returning listener karibu sana even you uh i'm happy that you're still here you are the reason why i still do this so thank you very very much we are currently going through the book of judges which as i mentioned is a collection of the stories of the judges that the lord raised to help the israelites um come off from their own mess <laughs> so today we are going to be covering judges chapter 14 <laughs> which is still we are still in the story of samson and i'm going to be reading this from the nlt version actually let me read it from the easy to read version um uh, so please kindly just stick around let's you know hope that you will follow through the story so that you don't miss all the lessons that i will share in the story as i read and even after I finish reading. All right, so this is titled Samson's Marriage. I told you guys, this is going to be like a neology. <laughs> but anyway, Samson's marriage. So Samson went down to the city of Timna. He saw a young Philistine woman there. When he returned home, he said to his father and mother, I saw a Philistine woman in Timna. I want you to get her for me. I want to marry her. So first, let's just, you know, put it in context that at that time, the custom was um, arranged marriage and the, the, the parents of the boy and the parents of the girl would agree and sit together. And generally, the, the parents would get someone a wife, like the parents would get their son a wife. So that is why he's coming to tell his parents, get me that philistine woman that i saw in timna his father and mother answered but surely there is a woman from the israelites you can marry do you have to marry a woman from the philistines their men are not even circumcised please note again context the context was that in in, in for the israelites that god had stated very clearly before they got into this promised land that they were not to intermarry with the people that they found in this promised land so that's why the the parents are just like surely so just marry marry an israelite woman um and then he's like yeah these guys are not even circumcised anyway but samson said get that woman for me she's the one i want so first we realize that someone is samson is very arrogant he's very disrespectful to his parents which is really really sad so Samson's parent didn't know that the Lord wanted this to happen. He was looking for a way to do something against Philistines and because they were ruling over the Israelites at that time. So at this point, there's a twist because yes, it is wrong. It is wrong to intermarry, but the Lord is like, you know what? I'll allow it. I will allow it. All right. So Samson went down to, with his father and mother to a city, to the city of Timna. They went as far as the vineyards near the city. There was a young lion suddenly rolled and jumped at Samson. The spirit of the Lord came on Samson with great power. I like that. I like the fact that every time um, Samson is about to do something great or something powerful, something very supernatural, the spirit of the Lord would like, it was the spirit of the Lord that enabled him to do that. So the spirit of the Lord came on Samson with great power. He tore the lion apart with his bare hands. It seemed easy to him. It was as easy as tearing apart a young goat. But Samson did not tell his father or mother what he had done. So first I'm thinking, why is he not telling his father? I mean, first I'm like, if I, if I kill an animal, hey, me, I'm going to tell everybody. But maybe, you know, like how in super mo superpower movies, like when a person who realizes they have superpower, the first thing they do with their power, they're just like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. So maybe that was what was happening. Samson was just like, oh my goodness, I have so much power and I didn't even realize I did that. Or also because he was not supposed to touch any dead animal. I know he's killed an animal. That means he's touched it. So that's why he is not telling his parents. So Samson went down to the city and talked to the Philistine woman. She pleased him. Several days later, Samson came back to marry her. On his way, he went over to look at the dead lion. He found a swarm of bees in its body. They had made some honey. 
So Samson got some of the honey with his hands and he walked along eating the honey. When he came to his parents, he gave them some of the honey and they ate it too. But Samson did not tell his parents that he had taken this honey from a body of a dead lion. Again, because it was against what he was supposed to do. He was uh, devoted to the Lord. He was like a Nazarite. That means he was not supposed to make himself unholy in any way. Anyway, let's continue with this story. So Samson has gone to marry, to I mean him and his parents now have gone to actually marry this Philistine woman. So Samson's father went down to the Philistine woman. The custom was for the bridegroom to give a party. So Samson gave a party. But the Philistines saw they were having a party. They sent 30 men to be with him. So they sent like, the Philistines sent 30 men to Samson to be like his groomsmen. Question is, where are his friends? Why are, is he being, being given groomsmen? Like, where are his people? Where are his friends? Where are his, you know, age mates and all that? Then Samson said to the 30 men, I want to tell you a story. This party will last for seven days. Try and find the answer during this time. It's like a riddle. If you can answer the riddle in that time, I will give you 30 linen shirts and 30 changes of clothes. Wow. But if you cannot find the answer, you must give me 30 linen shirts and 30 changes of clothes. And the 30 men said, tell us your riddle. We want to hear it. So Samson told them this riddle. Out of the eater came something to eat. Out of the strong came something sweet. That was the riddle. The 30 men tried for three days to find an answer, but they couldn't. On the fourth day, the men came to Samson's wife, or rather the fiancé, this girl that he's here to marry. They said, did you invite us here just to make us poor? You must trick your husband into telling us the answer to the riddle. If you don't get an answer for us, we will burn you and everyone in your father's house to death. So basically they go and they threaten this uh, fiancé and they tell her, if you don't go and trick your husband to tell you the answer, we will kill you. Because as we don't want to give him 30 shirts of linen and 30 chains of clothes, that's like 30 shirts of linen and then 30 different attires. That's a lot of clothes, guys. So Samson's wife went to him and began crying. She said, crying is a good thing. Sometimes it's also a bad thing. It can be very manipulative. She said, you just hate me. You don't really love me. You told my people a riddle and you will not tell me the answer. Samson said to her, look, I have not even told my father and mother. So why should I tell you? Samson's wife cried for the rest of the seven days of the party. Yeah, so sir, she's party pooping over here. She has finally, so he, so sorry, so, so he finally gave her the answer to the riddle on the seventh day. He told her because she kept bothering him. Can you imagine having a fiance who's crying at her own bachelor's party? That's not even now working. <laughs> then she went to her people and told them the answer to the riddle. Basically, she betrayed Samson. So before the sun went down to the, on the seventh day of the party, the Philistines men came and had the answer. They came to Samson and said, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? And Samson said to them, if you had not plowed with my cow, you would not have solved this riddle. That's basically to say, if you had not used my wife or my fiance, uh, you would not have solved this riddle. So Samson was very angry. And the spirit of the Lord came on Samson with great power every single time he's about to do something ridiculous or something, okay, maybe not something ridiculous, something powerful, something that he basically would not have been able to do without the spirit of the Lord. He went down to the city of Ashkelon and killed 30 Philistine men. He took all the clothes and property from the dead bodies and gave them to the men who had answered his riddle. Then he went to his father's house. So Samson, let me explain to you. So this, this party is supposed to take seven days. On the seventh day or after the seventh day, they're supposed to consummate their wedding and actually now be like man and wife. But at this point, that has not happened. Why? Because Samson has gotten upset because the, the fiance has betrayed him. He's gotten upset and has, has left his own party to go and kill people so that he can get shots to pay these guys that he promised and made a bet with. So he's not even at his own party on the seventh day he has left after he gave them the their shirts um he went to his father's house like whether he went home so samson's wife was given to the best man so the father of the wife this girl 
this lady, this Philistine lady, uh, was like, okay, seven days Meisha, we probably had, had already been given dowry, so he's like me, I'm not returning. So can I give this wife to somebody? <laughs> Who wants a wife? <laughs> and then the girl was given to Samson's best man. But remember, this best man were also part of the 30 men that were Philistine. So basically, the wife was given to just one of another Philistine. And that is basically where the story ends of this Samson's marriage, <laughs> or rather Samson's wedding day. There are already so many lessons from this chapter, to be honest. Then there's this, I mean, first, this is the first time that we see Samson speak. And he is arrogant towards his parents. He's demanding that they get him this specific Philistine lady as his wife. I mean, this was already against God's law. God had instructed the Israelites to not intermarry with the inhabitants of the promised land. But there's a twist because God allows it to happen. He is going to use even Samson's disobedience to accomplish the purpose for which he has called him for. God is going to use Samson's disobedience in this case to accomplish whatever purpose that he has called Samson for. Then we see the Spirit of the Lord coming powerfully upon Samson. So powerfully that he kills a lion and tore it into pieces. I mean, this guy, Samson... He really was the Superman of Old Testament. As in this guy was Superman of the Old Testament. The power that the Holy Spirit clothes us with is immeasurable. You can't measure it. And nobody can even match it. We really cannot lose when we have the Holy Spirit in us. Then after a few days, he goes ahead and scoops honey from a carcass of a dead lion. And yet he was not supposed to defile himself by touching any dead body. Both animal and and human as in this guy defiled everything he was supposed to not do like he was just like oh i'm not supposed to do this i'm doing it i'm not supposed to do this i'm doing it he went and killed 30 people those are 30 dead people the dead bodies that he's touching i'm just like wow another thing that seemed very off is that at his own bachelor's party that lasted seven full days he didn't have his own friends he had to be given 30 philistine men to be his groomsmen he didn't have his Israelite friends. He didn't have friends whom they shared the same God. Maybe if he had, they would have advised him against this marriage. Who are your friends? Do you have friends who can call you out when you are about to be disobedient to God? Or when you are being disobedient to God? Do you have friends who surround you? Or are you surrounded by people who don't share the same faith with you? Don't share the same values as you? They don't care whatever it is that you are doing. Where are you too? Who are your friends? I pray that you surround with yourself with people who can call you out when you're being disobedient to God. Then as, as expected, the lady is not even loyal. She betrays her own fiancé and causes him to lose a bet. Now Samson is angry. He goes and kills that man so that he can pay this bet. As in things that are just spiraling. And they're not even spiraling in the good way. Like they're just going south. Everything seems to be going south. But basically... I think the main lesson that I have taken from this specific chapter is that God will use even our disobedience. Or that God used some... I'm not sure about now whether God will use our disobedience to accomplish his purpose. But in this specific chapter and in this specific story of Samson, God used even his disobedience to still accomplish the purpose that he had intended to do with him. This is your girl, Wakeji Kamore, and this has been Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. See you tomorrow.